Hi, and welcome to 3ABN Today. I'm Tim Parton, the General Manager of the Praise Him Music Network. It's a delight uh, for me to be hosting this program today. This is not a, a place that I usually sit, so I'm, I'm really excited. And I'm excited because uh, I'm, hosting, I'm interviewing Roy Trayer, who is a concert pianist. So if you uh, are an aspiring piano player, uh, you'll want to tune in and listen to what uh, what Roy has to say, and we'll just be talking about some p piano player to piano player, just some, some insights. So I hope you enjoy this program. It's a pleasure to introduce Roy Trayer. Roy, thanks for being here. Thank you, my pleasure. Yeah, it's uh, wonderful. I, I love um, listening to you earlier today. You were doing some um, production music for us, um, and uh, you played like 17 songs, plus the uh, you had some uh, forehand uh, piano um, arrangements. Forehand piano arrangements, three of them with a friend of mine. Yeah, Victor. so um, hopefully we'll we'll be watching for those over the uh, over the time span, and we'll you're going to be playing for us from those um, pieces today during our interview, but. Um, it's, um, I want you, we can just start from the beginning, I guess, as everybody wants to know, when did you start playing? What was the, uh, what was your encouragement, your impetus? Was there, were your parents musical? Well, my parents were musical, mainly my dad and his father. Um, I always say that I wished I would have started sooner. Mm -hmm. um, my last teacher said, take that out of your mind. Don't say that anymore. Okay, look where you've gone now and just sure. focus on today. And she's, she was right. Um, I was 10 years old when I listened to my dad play a piece of, of Mozart, the Turkish march, wow. on a piano. We were visiting somewhere and I heard the tune and how he was performing it and just for fun and I really liked it for some reason. I thought to myself, I want to learn to play the piano. So near my 11th birthday, uh, we were shopping in a mall and I told my parents, I know what I'd like for my birthday gift. Oh yes, what? Uh, I'd like a keyboard, a little piano at least. Mm -hmm. And they were surprised and they bought me a five octave keyboard. Okay. I think they weren't so convinced that I would maintain it. That's why they sure. bought something cheap and small. I can't blame them because my older two siblings, they had taken music lessons, but they didn't go too far. Uh, so I think they probably didn't want to try with their youngest one. So did you have a, you didn't have a piano in the house? I then? didn't. No, okay, I did but, not. So, but your father played. Yes. But he didn't have a, a piano to practice on at home. He played until he got into college. Uh, oh, okay. So he later studied theology and and became a minister. Okay. So uh, he would just play piano occasionally whenever he would find one. So now you you've got a five octave keyboard, and uh, if if you're a piano player at home, you know how difficult it is to find middle C on a five octave keyboard because <laughs> there is no middle C. Exactly. Uh, and so because what how many octaves are on a regular piano? What a eight. Eight. Okay. So see, I learned yes. something. Um, so. How did that? Did, how how did, did that discombobulate you? <laughs> well, no, because I was new to the instrument, okay. you know. So I started learning on that, and they gave me the method my dad learned to play the piano. So my mom 
and uh, my grandfather, which is uh, a method from called Bayer. So it's like little numbers that you pass one level, you go to the next level until like level 100. And once I finished that, you could go on to other classical pieces, a little more complicated. So I found that motivating. And once I reached the end, they were starting to be convinced that I needed a piano. So one year after I began taking piano lessons from my father, they bought me an upright piano, oh, which they still have today, which I really like, oh, a Petroff. Nice. Piano, yes. So, no, we didn't tell the people that uh, you are not from the States. You're not from the United States. Uh, well, you may have been raised here, but yes. you were born... Well, in... my family is from Argentina, okay. Okay. Uh, but they were in Puerto Rico when I was born, okay. much okay. west Puerto Rico. And when I was three, we moved to the States. And then from there, every two, three years, we moved to a different state. Um, so I grew up in the States, okay, uh, okay. studied elementary, and then for high school I went to Argentina. Okay. So I've heard you uh, earlier talking, um, I didn't understand what you were saying, so you, you're, you, you speak Argentinian. <laughs> yes, the, the Argentinian Spanish. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Well, great. Well, um, thank you that we're um, translating today and um, I can understand you clearly. Um, so you're, you said your siblings didn't take to the piano. Um, and you were 10 or 11 at this point when you started playing. Um, do you have any, other than your father, do you have any influences as, as far as music-wise? Uh, is classical your influence or, or what? Classical is my influence. My, my father had played classical, performed classical pieces, and he would always talk great things about Beethoven, Chopin, Mozart, and that just inspired my young mind at the time. And no, he was actually the main uh, image I had, the influence, because I was very shy. Wow. I was a very shy kid, especially in my early years, teenage years. And so I just went to the piano and I found like the best friend right there. And I just worked hard. I found that passion and, and didn't mind practicing hours a day. Right. So being shy, uh, did it ever enter your mind that this would lead to a situation where you might have to get in front of people, get on a stage, a platform, and play? Or were you just kind of consumed, that, like you say, you found your friend? Well, um, I was shy in the sense of interacting with people, but right. when I knew, I thought I, I could do something, I wasn't, I wasn't like hiding no longer from inhibited. that. So I, I loved sports, playing basketball or soccer. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hide the skills, whatever I could do. Right. So I kind of used that in piano. It was like my kind of get away from the shyness just okay, okay I don't talk but I can play a little <laughs> yeah that's cool well now you say you were interested in sports did that ever interfere with your uh, piano like uh, practicing schedule because I know as, as a child sports I know you can't tell by looking but I'm not very sports minded <laughs> but um, no I couldn't the, tell by the way <laughs> so uh, but you know sports weren't even in the picture for me and so and nothing was competing with practicing or you know just playing the piano but for you did were you involved in sports still in school well I, I was involved from before I even started playing the piano and and sports were just something natural that I loved doing mm -hmm. um, I still do even to today yeah. uh, I didn't take formal piano lessons very early on my parents were my first teachers and then in high school that's when my formal piano teaching began but I was never told by any of my teachers, professors, don't do sports. Sure. I knew the risks, especially playing basketball of the fingers. I actually jammed my thumb a few times, but wow. never fractured, thank God. Right. Um, now I don't play that too often because I have kind of bad luck, bl bad luck. When I graduated from the master's program in piano performance, I had never played basketball that last year. And we had a social event gathering at the church. Oh, we're going to play a little basketball tournament. Do you want to play? Oh, Yes, I'd love to. I have three weeks until the recital. Uh -huh. And I played, and guess what? Since I was playing with fear, I jammed my pinky. Oh, no. And <laughs> no but, you know, things happen. I just think of myself of, of wanting to do several things and, and don't want to just now hide behind the piano. I, I, I love many things, so. Yeah, and I think that's important to be well diversified, well, you know, well rounded. Um, I, I tell people sometimes, and it's not far from the truth, that other than piano, 
I don't know much. I don't change the oil on my car. I don't mow the yard, you know, because these are things I just don't know how to do. <laughs> but, well, um, my, my wife complains. About oh, that. yeah, okay. So, well, that's, so, an, yeah. that's <laughs> another subject for another day, okay? We won't go there. Let's enjoy our time together. Yes. No. Well, it's, okay, so you're a piano player, so I think it's perfect that uh, we would go to a, a song that you have performed. Um, I think we'll uh, start with Power in the Blood. Sure. You want to set Sounds. this up? This is an arrangement of yours, right? Yes. Okay. Let's listen to uh, Day, uh, Roy Trayer play Power in the Blood. That is great. Power in the Blood. Roy Trayer, what a wonderful song, what a wonderful arrangement of that. Um, I, love, I love your style, I love your influence, and as you can tell, Roy is uh, not, he's wearing a different color suit, so he's not a quick change artist. He is uh, just, uh, we recorded those songs earlier, and they're going to be uh, played throughout the year uh, as production music. 
So I uh, just wanted you, to, wanted you to know that this uh, is not magic. It's just, <laughs> it's an actually different suit uh, because it was <laughs> done at a different time. But that's, uh, but it's still you, you playing. And, yeah, I, and, I think it's still me. Right, it, it looks like you. <laughs> in fact, you said that you were in here yesterday for 10 hours yes. practicing. Yes. And um, that's normal for you? To no way. I mean, what, before, back in a few years, or every time I have to give a recital, I try to spend as much time as I can. With family and other work and uh, obligations, it's defi definitely difficult. I have some days that I don't even practice, but I try to get some practice in whenever. But, for example, this weekend I was without my family, so um, I don't want to put the blame on them, but I was able to just stay Absolutely. here the whole day. Sure, sure. No, I totally get that. So you you have a three-year-old? I have a two-year-old. Two he, he will be three. Okay, yes. well, good. A lot of fun. and. So, uh, yeah, especially with a two-year-old, you don't have time to practice. Uh, exactly. I remember um, I have two sons, and, and they were both two-year-old at one time. Nice. <laughs> Not at the same time, but, uh, which, but which made it even more difficult, the fact that wow, they yes. were, you know. Uh, but uh, finding time to rehearse, to practice, uh, it, it's sacred time once you finally get it. Yeah, so. Their nap time and when they go to bed. Right. Uh, sometimes I'm just tired at night, but when I have an event coming up, I... I just sit on the piano. That's the hardest thing, sitting on the piano. Yeah. Once you start just five, ten minutes, uh, you don't care about time, at least yeah. in my case. Yeah. I, I think you probably might agree with that. I do agree with that. So you're, you're married. You live in Collegedale, Tennessee? Yes. And uh, what made you wind up in Collegedale? Well, um, I was living in Argentina after studying high school. Uh, that's where I met my sweetheart, though. Uh, the last year in, and in Argentina, in Argentina, okay. south of Buenos Aires, then the high school, the boarding school. Then we went up north to Buenos Aires. We have an SDA university, mm -hmm. uh, Universidad Adventista del Plata. That's where I decided to study psychology, following my brother's steps. Uh, he was a major in psychology, studying for a major in psychology here at Southern in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And I thought psychology was very cool and was interested in learning more about that. And it was a five-year degree. Thankfully for my older sister, she suggested that I continue doing music, at least on a side. So I ended up with both degrees uh, finished, but now I dedicate myself more to music. Okay, so you have a degree in psychology. Yes, and going back to your question, sorry. Oh. Uh, once I decided I wanted to stay more in music, <laughs> <laughs> wandered off more in music than in psychology, I started searching some universities where I could study a piano performance. That was my passion. So that's where I found Chattanooga, Tennessee, the professor there at the time, Dr. Sinsen Tsai. Uh, she had been in Argentina for 10 years, in Germany, California, and, and her bio really attracted me. And I sent a few emails, everything went well, scholarships came in, so I thought that was where God led, and I think He did because we have been blessed. So your, your degree from psychology came from Southern? No, from, from Argentina. Argentina, yes. okay, but your degree in music, your piano... Also from Argentina, uh, so, okay. but the master's in piano performance from Tennessee. Okay, from okay, Canada. perfect. So now let's talk about, just for a second, the, the link between uh, are you, have you been able to use psychology in music? I know there, there are like programs, music therapy, which I um, am not really steeped in, but, but I understand that it's a wonderful thing, and, and um, music can be very therapeutic, of course. Uh, do you, have, you, have you made a connection with that? Have you done any work in that? Or? Uh, I've been interested. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't made a really strong connection. I Since I have both degrees, I feel obliged to do that a bit. Mm -hmm. What I have done, for example, in the past in some, I have more in, in Hispanic churches given music seminars, okay. uh, the importance of music in the church and how music influences the brain and how we react to music and what kinds of music is better. Sure. Uh, science backs it, not only science, but the Bible as well, mm -hmm. uh, which is very, a very interesting topic. So um, what I like to do particularly my passion in piano is making arrangements of well-known hymns mm -hmm. that are inspiring. Right. Yes. Uh, arrangements, uh, what I try to do is uh, match the music to the lyrics and all of that has a more powerful influence to to what we experience. Now obviously that, that's not always the case. My wife complains saying, you don't know the lyrics of that song. You're right. <laughs> I was focusing more on the music. <laughs> right. But we I try to. That. But that's a, about the connection I try to make with psychology and music.
Very nice. So uh, if I were to, um, if, if you were analyzing me psychologically, uh, would you be playing music to it to where I could, I don't know, maybe that's a, that's a stretch, I guess. Anyway. Well, we can talk about that later, probably. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I definitely need it. No. Uh, so um, we've gone through, um, now when, let's talk about your, um, when you began to play concerts, you, uh, when you began to like do some traveling, accepting engagements to, to perform in churches, um, when did this start? Do you remember your first concert um, as far as outside of like recitals or things that, that were done in the in university? Outside of university, yeah. do you mean sacred concerts? Right. Okay, right. So Okay, when I first did that, well... Because let's, say, let's just tell the people this is what you do now. You, yes. you go around doing giving sacred concerts, yes. church concerts. And uh, so wh where did that start after your classical training? Okay. I occasionally give some classical concerts, but it's not my, my strength in the present. Right now I'm more fo focused on the sacred. It started back in Argentina. Uh, before even recording my first CD, I was um, friends with a quartet, mm -hmm. uh, very good singers, and um, I started composing and arranging some songs for quartet, just starting. That's where my creativity started. Vo vocal so, arrangements. Vocal arrangements, okay, nice. and I would just improvise on the piano sometimes because I was a bit lazy to write it all out. Yeah, but no, um, yeah. that's when, when we would tour Argentina. And we even went to Brazil to, uh, to give some concerts in sacred music. So I started more as an accompanist, and in their concerts I would have one or two solo pieces, okay. which I found very very fun and inspiring. Sure. So and so that you didn't have issues with being shy at this point, like you had been younger. Oh no! You, During high school, since I was in a boarding school, that's where my shyness left. Left. The Thank boat. God. Good. Awesome. <laughs> well, that's yeah. I um, I'm trying to think if I I never have really been a um, performer in the in the sense you know you can you see a lot of performers that really you know work the crowd and and uh, that's not my style, and so I, as I've watched you on on YouTube and even as you're performing, you you look like you're enjoying it, but you don't try to work the crowd. And and um, of course, I realized we were in a studio situation when you were recording songs today. Uh, well, but, there's a little crowd in the well. There is background, there, right? Yeah, <laughs> we, we are we are judging you actually. Yeah. We were back there <laughs> the critiquing you. Side of yeah, <laughs> we'll send your results later. <laughs> but uh, no, so it's important, you know, to when you when you think about performing, um, stage fright is a huge thing. Um, and I, I want to be sure and get to another song really soon, but I just want to hit on, um, you know, putting, putting aside our, our stage fright and, and um, for, for me, um, I, I, I think it's a matter of having grown up in, in music and it, always being on stage, it wasn't difficult. Uh, stage fright wasn't necessarily an issue, but um, as far as like when when you memorize your songs, you, you these are your arrangements, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're always going to be right there at the front of your mind. Exactly. So yes. so is there any like do you have any tips that you um, that that you do for yourself before you go out on stage on a platform? Because even if you're in church, uh, it doesn't matter. Sure, yeah. You can pray the Lord's <laughs> near you, but your mind can be far from you. Well, so, well, obviously prayer is excellent, but. W we shouldn't be, um, how do you say this, uh, ask for the Lord, the Lord for everything when we haven't done our part. Right, exactly. Uh, so practice obviously is one. Like I mentioned, 10 hours yesterday, I was trying to refresh some arrangements. Sure, sure. I was busy with a classical concert at the beginning of this month, and I thought to myself, no, but 3 ABN is more important right now. Right. And I just didn't have that time. So last week, I was refreshing some arrangements. Some of them I haven't even played in, in a couple of years. Yeah. And two of them, I actually, one of them, I made them this, this week. Okay. So that's why I was trying to practice so much, getting things fresh. Yeah. Um, what I try to do before a concert is, obviously, uh, if there is a difficult part of a piece that I don't have too secure, I'm doubting a bit, just take it very slow, mm -hmm. review it slowly, just work on it probably, not too much, don't overdo it, just relax. I, I always try to get to a relaxed state of mind, mm -hmm. uh, that's what works best. Um, and having reviewed a certain piece that, that just for some reason feels a little bit more uncomfortable, just helps me be more relaxed. Okay, I've got it down, 
in the real thing when we're out there, just go with confidence. Yeah. I mean, I was reading James chapter one, verse six yesterday, saying that the doubtful person just is blown away by the surge of the sea easily. Right, right. So we have to go with confidence, but uh, there, there are certainly good tips that we should follow to be able to reach that mind of, of relax and, and mm -hmm. confidence. Well, that's a great segue into this song. Um, I wanna hear you play it as well. And uh, this is a favorite hymn of mine. And so let's see what uh, skill you bring and arrangement you bring to it as well. Enjoy this. Thank you. you.
That was so oh, great. Thank you. Praise God. Yeah, amen. Praise God. Roy Trayer, uh, wonderful pianist. Uh, uh, that was your arrangement, it is yes. well. Uh, so tell me what's going on in your mind when you're arranging a song like that. And what does it mean to arrange? I mean, you know, the song is written, it is well. Mm -hmm. uh, so talk well, to me about that. Well, the passion I have of arranging hymns for piano solo is, well, uh, there's several ways I can take this. One of them is that I've been practicing classical pieces and when you learn a classical piece you might be months practicing it mm -hmm. until you finally perform it. And I thought to myself, why am I practicing months for a classical piece? I will perform once and maybe for a special music in church I just practice one day and supposedly it's fine. So I wanted to make piano arrangements, at least for myself, that were at about the same level of the classical pieces that were demanding right. to find that more fun and inspiring and satisfying and would yeah. motivate me too. Sure. Um, but as far as what goes in my mind when I arrange, uh, depends the day. Yeah. Obviously, I try to uh, study the hymn a little bit, uh, the composer behind it, the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, even like the story of that, of it as well, in yes. fact, is a huge, uh, it's a wonderful story of the, uh, on the ship where the ship sinks. And um, so I can understand, in fact, I was, I was feeling as you were playing uh, the emotion of uh, at certain points. There's a little so. minor section there, unsteady, just the emotions might drift a bit. And then finally the victory comes and nice. it is well with her. So, because yeah. we have a mighty God. Right. That's awesome. I, I love the process of the, um, any creative person, artist um, that, that has a story behind what they do and they, all, all the time that they are creating whatever uh, piece that they're creating, there's, there's uh, something going on in their mind. It's not just a random, although sometimes it may look random, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but, um, but that's, uh, that's a great gift. Uh, I mean, w when it comes to um, s the structure of the pieces, I try to like have a general structure sure. of the piece, and then I start working on details in the section. Okay, what kind of passage, what kind of technique, what kind of uh, runs can I do here? Uh, and I always try to make it sound interesting for me, because if it's not interesting for me, it won't be interesting for the audience right. either. Um, and uh, sometimes you wake up and, and you didn't like what you did yesterday or the week before and you have to change it. And sure. it's kind of having that flexibility that can help just uh, take your pride away. You might have worked on something for an entire week, but if something else sounds better, just, just move on. And I try to do that. Right. Not always works, but I try. Sure. Now you are a, uh, you, you're teaching right now at a, um, a college, right? Yes. Okay, in, um, uh, um, where is this? Lookout Mountain, Lookout Mountain, Georgia. Okay, and the name of the college is? Covenant College. Okay, great. And so that's located in North Georgia? Northwest Georgia, okay. yes. Okay, um, and uh, that's not far from College Dale, so you still live in College Dale, I just right across the border. I live and commute, yes, yeah, okay. about 45 minutes. So you, what, what are you teaching? I teach piano. I, I'm the main piano adjunct professor there, so I have about 12 piano students and I teach a class, piano pedagogy. Okay, and that's how to teach How to teach piano. Piano. Okay. So these yes. students are learning how to, how to be piano yes. teachers. Yes, yes. So um, do you have the opportunity to teach any arranging as far as um, how, how you arrange? Do you well, there is a, a chapter in, in the book I use, the textbook I use for piano pedagogy. There is a chapter, so we, we dedicate one class just on arranging and things like that, but it's, it's, not, it's not what the most emphasis. teachers do, so that's not the sure. main emphasis. Okay, okay. Well, that's interesting. Another thing that you also do is you are a church pianist. Would yes. that be safe to say? Yes. Now, that sounds pretty outrageous. I really enjoy doing that. Well, that's, uh, that's dynamite, and, and any church would be blessed to, to have your skill and your um, oh, ability. Uh, so uh, let's listen to another song. No, is this song maybe something that you would play at a, at a church offertory? Oh, for or? sure. Most of my arrangements I've played for offertory. Okay. Oh, sweet. I'm well, always excited. Yeah, well, we're excited to hear this song, My Jesus, I Love Thee, Roy Trayer.
<laughs> That's awesome. I love that. Okay, so we have to tell the people, if you didn't notice, there were two people sitting there at the piano. Four hands, an arrangement from Roy Trayer. Uh, you. Yeah. I act like we're third person, but it's <laughs> really, it was you. So tell us who your partner there on the piano bench was. Oh, he's a friend of mine living in Chicago, Victor Moreno. Okay, and how, what's the connection of you? Just a um, good friend? Well, he was a very good friend of my sister-in-law okay. uh, when she lived in Chicago. And when we came back, to, uh, when I moved back to the States with my wife now in 2012, um, his church in Chicago, he actually invited me to give a piano concert. So, okay. so uh, he was one of the first to actually invite me when we came back to have a piano concert. So Wonderful. I feel very grateful for that. Yeah, so I was thrilled that Victor drove down um, and spent some time just, and he recorded, I believe, three Three, three of the four hands. So a four hand um, piano is like, uh, to me, a three legged race, you know, where you're, I don't know if you ever ran in a three legged race where you've got, uh, you know, one, one of your legs tied to one leg of the other person uh, and you're having to oh, yes. you know, make it work because you've got to be on the same page, yes. literally, not yes. only on the music, but in, in your mind and in your same tempo. And, yes. and uh, so that's uh, something, and especially if you don't, you don't often um, play the piano with Victor. Do no, you know I mean? no. I mean, so, we only rehearsed uh, yesterday a little okay. bit. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's a to me it's a difficult thing. I, I um, when you're maybe if you're on two p p different pianos, um, but to have that person that close, uh, first of all, you're in my space. Sure. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, you can see him. You you saw him earlier today. He's big. Right. Exactly. And, and yesterday I was a little bit too far to the right. He said, "Just push me." I'm like, right. yeah, like that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, that's great, though. I, I love that. And so you wrote this originally for four hands. Yes. So first I, I made an arrangement for piano solo, but then I adapted it for four hands so that Victor could, could play as well. That is wonderful. What a great gift you have, uh, arranging and performing. Um, just an all-around nice guy. My goodness, that's oh, great. Oh, praise <laughs> God. Again, thanks. So um, I um, want to, let's see, talk about... Um, Oh, I wanted to mention that you have CDs. Uh, you have two CDs right now. Uh, the first was Shine, Jesus, Shine. And then one, you, your most recent, more recent, is uh, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Um, and these are just solo piano. Solo piano. Right? I do have a third one. It came out at the beginning of this year. Okay. Uh, I forgot to bring that today. Okay. Sorry. But uh, it's not piano solo. I accompany a baritone friend from Argentina, okay. Diego Aravena, and uh, he also sings in English. So we have both in Spanish and English. And again, most of them, uh, I arranged the hymns for him too. Okay, so I believe I saw him on a YouTube, on, on your YouTube channel. Yes. Uh, he, there was a song of you accompanying him. Yes, or on the Facebook, I can't remember, but on one of them, yeah, yes. Yeah, I believe this was YouTube, but but, okay. uh, but it's great and, and uh, wonderful, deep, Baritone oh, yes. voice. That was him then. Yes. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was him. So uh, that's that's wonderful. So be sure and um, go to your website to purchase those, right? That's the best place yes. to do that unless they come to your house in college, Dale. Sure. <laughs> or come and Open roll in your, in your class <laughs> at, at college. Um, so you've got uh, Facebook, YouTube. Um, Talk about your schedule. What kind of a schedule do you keep as far as um, traveling? Do you do a lot of concerts? Have, have you been giving a lot? Well, um, concerts, uh, I gave one this past weekend here, this Sabbath here at, at the church, um, Thompsonville. But I hadn't given a concert until, well, actually, I kind of am forgetful. I gave a concert about a week ago with a, a uh, music director at a church I work at, um, United Methodist Church. He's okay. a trumpet player, so we gave a joint concert. Okay. And before that was a classical concert, but sacred solo concert, I hadn't given that since like September. Uh, just the busy schedule in, in college and teaching and, and family. But I'm always open whenever there's a church that would be interested. Uh, I make that time available. I, I always love that. So during summers or when I have a week off from college, spring break or fall break, I try to go places. So some of the places I've gone for the last two years was one Puerto Rico, um, what Tanzania was the last one I've yeah. been to. But that wow. was more for mission work of teaching piano. And they were amazing. 
uh, people. That was a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, I also went to Norway where Diego was living at a time, okay. uh, the baritone. So he invited me. And then last year I went to Portugal, Spain, and Italy, like very quickly. Like just, it wow. Was, it was pretty fun. How but, very uh, neat. And so you're always relying on a piano that's in tune. Um, yes, you're, which you're, isn't always the case, but right. I think I'm, I'm an easygoing person, so I've played on pianos that haven't had the ivory on the keys. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> so, anyway, we won't go there, I think. Well, no, but that's, that's awesome that you can easily adapt, and you have to, you're right, if, unless you carry one around in your back pocket, which is a little exactly. difficult to go through security with a grand piano in your yes. back pocket. It's a risk, but <laughs> we have to right. adapt. You're exactly right. Well, I want to, uh, I, I've got to hear one more song, and okay. then um, we will just finish up. But I want to hear uh, Tis So Sweet. Hope you enjoy this. Roy Treyer, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Do you have a favorite composer? Do you are busier? Well, uh, again, uh, 
sometimes I wish I had more time to practice, but every time I can listen to music, I try, because as a musician, it's always good to stay tuned to other artists' music and what's going on in the world, not only back in the days like Beethoven, Chopin list, but current artists too. Sure. As a matter of fact, it might sound curious to you, but I've listened to you the past month. Uh, <laughs> well, I thought I recognized a, a song of mine that you had slid in there. In This is my father's it. world where you sing and play <laughs> oh and there would be others. That's fun. But yeah, I think, I think uh, every time I, I have the option of listening to other music, it's always good to get ideas yeah. and, and see what's going on out there. Very cool. Well, I think it's um, that's wonderful, and I'm, I'm flattered that you've been listening because I certainly am going to listen to you now that I am, uh, have your CDs, <laughs> and I'm going to go to sleep with them and, and memorize your, your <laughs> licks and your moves and all those things. So I want to uh, quickly roll to the um, to where people can contact you okay. to have you come into their church. Uh, so let's watch, uh, see where they can contact you. Roy performs piano solo concerts in churches and also gives talks and seminars on how to make music a true worship experience. If you would like to invite him to your church for a concert or if you would like to obtain a copy of his CDs entitled Under the Same Sky, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, or his newest one called Shine Jesus Shine, please visit his website, RoyTrayer.com. That's R O Y. T-R-E-I-Y-E-R dot -E -E com. You may also call him at 423-504-7549. That's area code 423-504-7549. Roy, share with our viewers the importance of committing your talents and your time uh, to the Lord. Well, um, growing up, I, I was grateful for my parents who motivate me in that. They actually once took away the TV and video games, but um, I encourage whenever I give a concert, for example, a message for the youth. You know, there are so many distractions, so many things that just occupy our minds, technology, entertainment, and uh, time goes by so fast. Even this interview, we had fun and it went by flying. Yeah. And life is short and we have to do as much as we can with it, something useful. So. If you don't know what talent you have, what gift God has given you, uh, you can be assured that God has given you at least one. And it's up to you to have some time to discover it. And then when you discover it, to develop it. And develop it hard because God will certainly bless you. And, and there's no greater joy when you can develop a gift given from God. He will carry you through their way. Amen. That's great. That's a good word. And um, I just want to encourage you in all your ways, acknowledge Him. God, and He will direct your path. It's been such a treat uh, to interview you. Thank you. You're, you're a wonderful pianist, wonderful arranger, um, and a wonderful guy. You really appreciate your heart and uh, appreciate what you're doing um, for the kingdom because music is, is something that we, we need. We can't live, I can't live without music. Yes, exactly. So, um, I, and I encourage you as a viewer not to live without music. Go every day uh, singing a song in your heart because God wants to hear you sing. God wants to hear you play. God wants to uh, use your talents to uh, win the world to Him. So thank you for watching and be sure and watch again.